And how long have you been in Sideshow? I've been performing since I was about 15 years old. Wow. Uh, I learned something called the human blockhead, and that's where you pound a nail into your nose uh, with, a, with a hammer, and then you can pull it out. I actually learned it in the back of a moving vehicle, which is not the recommended <laughs> way to learn how to pound a nail into your face. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not, not good. Once I learned all my strongman feats, yeah. and I kind of felt I was tapped out, and if I, if I did anything else, if I wanted to learn sword swallowing or fire eating, I was going to either burn myself alive or cut myself up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I went to Sideshow School, and I learned those things to kind of round out my repertoire. Okay. This is kind of a broad question, but what is the history of Sideshow? How did it get started? It originates actually in Europe Okay. for traveling fairs. So you'd, you'd have someone like the Fool or Jugglers, and that's where it originated from. People would bring in animals from different parts of the country to basically show them off. Okay. And it sort of evolved into that. And then those fairs came over to the New World, and then it became sort of Americanized, and there was tents and, you know, more strange creatures, animals, and performers. Sideshow, at least in my life, it was up until a couple of decades ago, it was always just something that you saw in movies talking about the past. Yeah, you know, It's always been around, uh, but in popular culture, it kind of started to creep back into everyday life on TV and radio, MTV and stuff like that, and with Jim Rose. Now, there, there is a bit of a difference between, uh, you know, what, what the resurgence is now and mm -hmm. what you know, it was originally in like the 1800s, you mm. know, because back then it, everything was under canvas and it w went around with a carnival or a circus yep. and they would have a sideshow out front where they would have a 10 in one. You'd pay the price, you know, of one ticket and you would see 10 different acts. Okay. And I myself, I've never worked under canvas. I am strictly a stage show. Okay. And that is more or less what is happening now is the stage show of, you know, taking sideshow skills bringing them to a stage, mixing it up with things like burlesque and other variety acts, that's what's really making the resurgence. There's three types of, of acts. Okay. Okay? You have your your, uh, your 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 working act. Okay. I'm your working act. Okay. I swallow swords, I breathe fire, that would be your working act. Okay. You would have your made freaks. Okay. Your made freaks are the people who, uh, say, the living skeleton, who probably had uh, anorexia. And then you would also have the, the, the born freaks. Okay. Now the born freaks, those people were really like the kings of Sideshow. A lot of the time they owned their own, you know, part of the carnival. The majority of the skills that are to be done today, are they new or are they the same ones that were done a hundred years ago? Well, <laughs> more than a hundred years ago. I mean, oh, sword yeah. swallowing has been around, uh, I think we have carvings back to 2000 BC wow. of sword swallowers. Yeah, wow. And then it was perfected by the ancient fakirs. In yeah, India. That, that was in India. People were uh, sword swallowing as holy men. The ones that are traditional, has the ways that they're being done, has that changed? Or are you, when you swallow a sword, are you swallowing it the exact same way that they were swallowing it 2000 years ago? Uh, well, first off, one of the things that I like to use when I swallow a sword is I use some Listerine on my okay. blade. So in case I do, uh, you know, give myself an abrasion, I'm not, you know, giving myself an infection as well. So, no. <laughs> They're not <laughs> using, you know, Listerine on it. You're using Listerine and that's a new added thing. Yes. But the actual technique for doing that. Mm -hmm. Throats have pretty much been the same that's, for a That's the same. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So when you, if you are learning the proper way and going and learning from somebody who knows how, an apprenticeship, I guess you could almost say it, yeah. and loosely, but still, you're really being passed down a tradition that has mm -hmm. been passed down and passed down and passed down. For yeah. centuries. For yeah. centuries. Yeah. We have car cave carvings of people blowing fire blasts. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it's definitely been around for a very, very long time. You've been doing this for a little while. Have you ever actually gotten hurt doing it? Most of the things that I do will either hurt or maim you. There are a few things that I do that are just gross. But uh, just last week, I texted Joe a picture of a piece of glass that I dug out of my gums above my molar. Oh. My tongue is not very long. Uh, and I went to go put a mouse trap on my tongue and uh, it came up and blew my front two teeth off. 
Oh. So both of my front two teeth are fake. Oh. Don't try any, any of these things unless you have someone there. But even if you have someone there that knows what they're doing and can train you, uh, that isn't necessarily a, a safeguard. You can still hurt yourself. You you are going to hurt yourself. So oh. yeah, yeah I've, oh. uh, I've wrecked myself a couple of times. Oh. Oh. So not, not so much with sword swallowing. We watched you earlier actually bite into a light bulb. Right. And it was a real light bulb. How are you not dead right now? <laughs> well, there's two things that you need to know about uh, about eating bulbs uh, or eating glass. And the first thing is you, you can't chew it up too much and you can't chew it up too little. Uh, if you chew it up too much, uh, if you've ever heard of assassins putting ground glass into people's food, uh, that is, uh, it, it's not because it's gonna cut you up. The reason why they would do that is because it actually will go to your bloodstream go to your brain and give you a stroke. And that's how an assassin would kill for that. Okay. Uh, kill that way. Uh, so you can't chew it up too much. You can't chew it up too little, otherwise you have very large chunks going through, you know, down your esophagus into your stomach and you're processing it, and then you're cutting yourself from the inside out. Yeah. So uh, now a lot of people ask me, how does it come out? And of course the answer to that is sparkly. So how do you protect like the inside and mouth? I mean, I you, you get cuts occasionally, as you, you said Absolutely. before, you pulled a, a piece of glass. Well, but is there a technique of, of doing it that minimizes the damage? There is, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming here and talking with me today. And Absolutely. If somebody wants to come see your any of your shows, is there a place that they can find out when you're playing? Uh, well, you can uh, check out the Scarred and Dangerous Thrill Show. I always have a, a calendar of events up on there. Uh, you can uh, get a hold of me through Facebook. Just look up Christopher Scarborough and look at the guy swallowing the sword. Uh, and also uh, on the Curioso Podcast website, we make sure we update events on there and of course uh, on our our Facebook and Twitter and everything through there. Cool. Anytime I have an event, I'm blasting it out there on social media. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>